Hi everyone. Before we deep dive into working with ProRes RAW, let's take a closer look at this format, how it works and what it has to offer. Let's start with the camera setup and how ProRes RAW is recorded in the first place. With a continually growing list of cameras that provide a RAW output that can be captured into ProRes RAW, there are a few differences in setting up the camera, but you can jump over to the Atomos YouTube channel for the latest setup guides for each camera. Fundamentally though, you need to enable the RAW output from the camera, be this via SDI on the Shogun and Zumo or HDMI on the Ninja 5. With the RAW output enabled, the Atomos device will detect the RAW signal and prompt you to switch to the ProRes RAW recording codec. From here on out, you'll be capturing the RAW Bayer pattern instead of a baked RGB or YOV422 signal. The RAW output of each and every camera can vary. Some output linear, others log. ProRes RAW is universally able to handle these variations and the Atomos recorder stores the incoming RAW signal in the recorded ProRes RAW files. Now when it comes to some cameras, why do we record 12-bit log from them? Isn't 16-bit linear better? Well, not really. The distribution of stops in code values is fairly inefficient with linear data. Log data makes much better use of the available code values and distributes the stops evenly across the board. Because of this, a 16-bit linear image can be converted into 12-bit log without any noteworthy loss of information or quality. At the same time, we save a lot in file sizes and with that, storage space. This in turn allows us to record longer onto our SSD and our Atomos and spend less time on backup and transferring data. In a similar, yet slightly different way, this also applies for a 12-bit ProRes 4x4 file compared to a ProRes RAW file. As we learned in the previous video, a conventional ProRes 4x4 is using full RGB data per pixel and as such, the file sizes can be huge. Not so much with ProRes RAW. Here is a graph that shows estimated record time comparisons between the various formats. ProRes RAW not only allows you to record the longest, it also records the best image quality possible. So now that we have this 12-bit ProRes RAW file, what's in it? The resolution is mainly camera dependent. The initial lineup from Atomos supports SDI cameras on the Shogun Inferno and now the Shogun 7 at up to 5.7K at 30fps, 4K DCI at 60fps and 2K DCI at up to 240 frames per second with an option for 120p burst mode on certain cameras. Since release, a raft of new cameras have been added with support for RAW over HDMI on the Ninja 5 with support for all leading Japanese camera makers, supporting 5.9K at up to 30fps, 4K DCI at 60fps and HD resolution at up to 120 frames per second. But there's more to ProRes RAW than just pristine high resolution imagery. It also ships with all the capture metadata from the set. In Scratch we have access to all that metadata through the metadata stack and can use any of the items in here for burn-ins or file naming. With this clip for instance we have not only the Atomos recorder model and firmware but also the camera manufacturer and camera model as well as the shutter angle, white balance and f-stop number. Most importantly though, we see some metadata about the monitoring mode used on the Atomos during the shoot. The linear RAW output of the camera was viewed as an HLG image with REC 2020 primaries. Scratch will also forward all of this metadata into a ProRes H.264, DNX or EXR file that we render out, so it can be used in other tools such as Avid or Nuke. And for those tools that do not read metadata out of the video files, you can of course always export an ALE to transport all the source metadata into other tools. Lastly, one thing that frequently comes up in discussions is that ProRes RAW lacks white balance controls. This made some people doubt whether ProRes RAW can be considered a true RAW format. As we learned in the previous video, whether or not a format can be called a RAW format first and foremost depends on what kind of data it stores. ProRes RAW stores a Bayer pattern and with that actual RAW image information as opposed to an already debayered or baked 
RGB or YOV image. That being said, of course, having Kelvin, Tint and ISO gain parameters is incredibly helpful when it comes to develop a RAW image. So we implemented them for ProRes RAW into Scratch. Also, Scratch allows us to choose not only the color space, but also the gamma space that we want to debayer our RAW footage to. This makes it easy to get to a more unified starting point across the board when shooting with various different cameras at the same time. We can for instance shoot ProRes RAW with a Panasonic S1H, a Canon C300 Mark II and a Zcam E2 and debayer all footage to a unified color space and gamma, like Rec 2020 and Vlog. This of course does not make up for differences between those cameras, but it allows us to treat all footage in a very similar way from the start and possibly even use grades and LUTs that we might already have. In the next video we'll go over importing and setting up the footage in Scratch. We'll take a closer look at the debiring options and also talk a bit about color space management. See you there!